Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to ETS2 Part 2 of our long haul from Spain to uh, England And looks like you arrived just in time because the sun seems like it's uh, peeking out a bit So time to get our trip started again Had a great night Time to get going I need to have some answers to continue I have some questions to continue answering couple from Jay but yeah since I'm pre-recording this as you're watching this I'll be in China so I haven't read any of the comments yet but I hope you did comment on the previous episode and I hope you enjoyed it I surely did so yeah let's see where how, how far we can travel today We're starting off at uh, 560 kilometers on the odometer Let's see by the end of this episode how far we've gotten. Okay. So we are going to... We're going through France. We're in France now. And we will be making our way to England. I'm not sure when we'll do that. Maybe next episode. We'll see, right? Okay, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, start, some, let's start answering some questions. So, in the last episode, I didn't finish answering a question. Jay asked, uh, uh, What are the two things you'll never spend money on? Mm. And I answered one thing was I won't buy... I don't buy branded stuff. You know, like uh, clothes, bags, uh, accessories. Branded meaning the ridiculously expensive ones. I try to find the balance between both quality and uh, price. So I don't like the super cheap ones either because they usually break faster and they're not worth the money. So I try to find the the, uh, the 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 perfect one in the middle where it's not cheap but it's still affordable and it's uh, very comfortable and very durable, very uh, fashionable. Maybe not fashionable but uh, looks great. Ah, there we go. Perfect timing, guys. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We shall uh, take some photos. Maybe right now. Because uh, we don't get that beautiful sunrise often. And later on, it will uh, actually go away. So might as well make the most of it now. Let's take a different kind of shot here. Can we take something like... Ah, idea. Something like that can work. Yeah, brand new day. Let's also take a closer shot with the truck because the truck needs some loving and the textures there are a bit tilish, a bit Minecrafty. So let's not focus on that. Let's focus on on the truck instead. Ah, yeah, this actually wins. This actually looks a lot better. Okay. Let's do this. And nobler, nobler thing. Thank you. That is a done deal, yo. Good. Right, continuing. And the brand that I shared with you, my favorite brand, I think most of my clothes are coming from there now, Uniqlo. And uh, Uniqlo is getting pretty famous. It's from Japan. But I think. Yeah, and even in the US, there are quite a number of stores already. So it has reached all over the uh, Pacific, is it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it has crossed boundaries. And we have lots of them in Singapore, lots of them in Manila. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, that's my number one favorite brand. I also buy some clothes from Thailand, from the stores there. They're a bit more on the cheaper side and not as durable, but they are pretty cheap, so you can buy lots. So that, that's kind of worth it as well. And kind of fun to shop sometimes. Sometimes. Not really a fan of shopping for clothes though. Let's cruise along here because I'm seeing that the toll gate is coming. I also noticed that uh, the Retarder sounds on this truck are not in, are non-existent. I think it's mainly it's probably because of an old version. 
because at in one at one point they transferred the retarder to the common sounds or the, to, to the truck specific sounds and if this is an old version of the sound file then that probably is referring to an old uh, like uh, place in the files anymore which doesn't exist so maybe it doesn't find the retarder sounds at all that could be the case but i uh, have forgotten anyway we'll make it work we still have the exhaust brake so yeah that's uh, one thing uniqlo um so i won't buy branded clothes i won't wa buy ex insane expensive clothes i don't like it jewelry i won't buy i'm not a jewelry kind of guy i'm a gadget kind of guy though so i'll buy plenty of gadgets but uh, not jewelry so i think i shared with you at one point already the kind of gadgets that i have crap thank goodness for those lines thank you subtle icons it's actually going to a wrong junction so i did i think i shared this before i i bought like i, I like buying gadgets right now i'm wearing uh samsung gear s3 a smartwatch from samsung on my left hand and i'm wearing wearing a fitbit on my right hand <laughs> so uh, it, and, I'm, and i'm at home so how much more when i go out so I, I'm like a cyborg. Mrs. Clumsy calls me a cyborg sometimes because I have so many gadgets. But I, I like them. I like fiddling with them. It's the geek in me. Clumsy geek, right? And I just bought a new gadget. Yesterday, it arrived yesterday. I bought a smart bulb because one of the bulbs in the house, uh, uh, how do you say, um, puffed out, gone out because it's been, that bulb has been in service for, I don't know, three, more than three years, so it went out, so I had to buy a new one. And I was browsing through the online site, and I was looking at it, and I saw that there is this smart bulb. Apparently, smart bulbs are very hassle-free, huh? Because I was expecting, like, with a smart bulb, you would need to have, like, a separate power source. Like, normally, you would screw it in, right, the bulb, and then it would light up. But it has to have Wi-Fi if it's a smart bulb. So I thought to power the Wi-Fi, you had to plug it in separately. So you'd have like a, a, an awkward cord somewhere or something. But I found out that it's actually just the same connection. So screw it in, it lights up. And at the same time, the Wi-Fi is powered up. So it's hassle-free. So that's what I did. And I'm, I, I was playing with it yesterday. Like I was changing the colors, uh, changing the hue. <laughs> and Mrs. Clumsy was like, ah, here we go again. <laughs> Someone's geeking out over the gadget. Yeah, gadgets are something I put by, but uh, clothes not, bags not, just for uh, practical reasons, but not for splurging. Gadgets I would happily splurge. The other thing I won't buy is, uh, well, not really, it's, it's not really the things I won't buy, but it's the manner of being sold to. I don't like buying when someone is pushing me to buy something like when there's a salesman who is actually like outside and trying to catch your attention and trying to uh, something is off one sec guys sudden stopping by traffic uh, they really like doing that they really like doing that stopping last minute because they are such poor mergers you squeeze in here Okay, this guy won't let me pass. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the fast lane because everybody's having trouble on that other side. There we go. Perfect. Ooh. Man, that, that car got toast. Completely toast. Hope the guy or the girl inside is okay. So I think we're basically passing through the highway. We're not going to exit at any point until the, the end. Maybe until we reach Makale. Something like that. Yeah, looks like we're going straight here as well. Cool. So yes, I, I don't like it when people uh, hard sell me. That's I think that's the term. You know when they're acting all aggressive oh you have to buy this now there's a promo 
and it will be over uh, there's a sale and tomorrow there will be no sale anymore and uh, so you have to get it now and uh, yada, yada 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 I hate that absolutely hate it you know sometimes I don't buy something even if I want it just because of that hard selling like just to like get it back in their faces like I don't like that approach you know don't pressure me give me the facts show me give me your spiel give me the, uh, the yeah sell it to me and then let me think about it but if you push me then I'm gone it is still work hey bro so yeah that's my pet peeve I hate buying things like that so I would rather look for someone else for something else someone selling a similar product that is selling me something in a more uh, civil manner yeah but I, I really hate that so usually when when I get approached to that I, 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 just, I always tell them and this is my advice to you as well if you're the type of person who gets pressured into things because I was like that before and then I would buy things that I did, don't didn't really need or uh, didn't really like weren't really the best choice best option if I had time to think is it 70 here? no 180 okay. or 80 rather not 180 is dangerous Maybe we can squeeze in here, fast lane. Experience the joy of uh, auto toll. Okay, I'm going to stay on the left because that guy is not going to let me pass. Retarders at work. Thank you. So yeah, I really hate that when someone hard sells me. So my, my advice there is how you approach it is you uh, tell them, no, I have to think about it. Like send me an email or give me a flyer or give me give me what you want. Give me what, uh, tell me how long it is, the, the, the sale or the promo. Um, what I can get when I avail of it early and then let me think about it and then I'll get back to you. And then if they push me more, then I will just do the same thing, but I will basically not do anything. Like if they say, oh, but if you don't avail it now, as in right now, it won't be available anymore. Then I would basically say, okay, fine, then I won't. Like if I, if I didn't come here, if I didn't meet you, then I wouldn't have known it anyway. So then forget it then. But yeah, you have to have time to think, especially if it's a big purchase, like, I don't know, insurance, uh, something major, something which you re don't really need. So you have to evaluate these things. Weigh it against your budget. Um, check if it's really something that will give you joy. So you might be aware that I listen to personal fin finance podcasts. And one of the most important points, most practical points, is you have to evaluate. I think this came from the book, uh, Your Money or Your Life. You have to evaluate things that you get in a ratio. Like, uh, how much joy do you get per amount of dollars spent? Like, if you're spending a huge amount, it has to have a huge joy factor to you. And you have to, like, reflect and evaluate. Will this really make me happy? Or is this, this just something that I got used to buying? Or is this just something that I would buy and maybe leave later on? So that joy factor has to be there. And that's how I usually evaluate things. And that helps a lot. Because like when I bought my yoke, I recently bought a, a flight yoke. And uh, initially I was hesitant. I was deciding, I was uh, a bit... Uh, um, thinking not to buy because I didn't really need one because I have a HOTAS already, a basic HOTAS but then I, I was enjoying flying so much and I was like missing out that feeling of missing out FOMO no, no, that feeling that something was incomplete and I was thinking to myself why am I not buying something when I'm playing so much flight sims and I'm, I'm, I'm going to play flight sims I'm, going, I'm getting into flight sims now there is no turning back and so but then I thought to myself like maybe it's just a phase give it a couple of weeks and if you still like flight sims and if you still like the yoke 
then go. So I waited a couple of weeks. I think I waited a month actually. And I still was I was craving for it even more. And so I bought it. And so that gave me huge amounts of joy per dollar spent. And, I, and it's a very worthy purchase, I would say. So I usually do it like that. So I try to weigh things and I try to um, give it a bit of time. If I want to buy something, give it a week, give it a day, give it a month. If you still like it, then you probably like it, really like it. And it's probably going to be worth it. But if it's like a spur of the moment thing, then it will be gone if you give it a couple of days. So that's that's one tip and that's how I usually do it. And, uh, France really looks amazing, huh? France is one of my most favorite DLCs, mainly because of how the roads, how the trees look like, and how the entire scenery looks like. It just feels so... what is the term? Lush, I think? Yeah, I think lush is the term. It just feels so good driving through them. And the toll gates, in reality, would be a huge pain, but uh, in the game, it's actually an exciting thing because you have to slow down properly. So it's a bit of... Uh, it's something to tweak. Yeah, it's something to work with. Cool. But thank you for the question, Jay. I really like these questions. They're, they're making me think and they're making me reflect. Next question. Whoa. What was that? Looks like I'm getting a couple of uh, hiccups. Okay. Next question from Jay as well. They're given 300,000 to make one room in your house or apartment ridiculously amazing. What room do you pick and what upgrades do you make? No, not the gaming room. Pick another one. <laughs> oh man. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Which one would I pick? So if I can pick something for the gaming room, room Probably also not for the living room then, huh? Because I could buy like a large TV, surround sound, but I probably won't. Um, so let me share with you something before I answer that. I'm not a real... Uh, I'm not... How do you say? I don't know a lot about... I don't know a lot about houses, about uh, how to... Like furnish a house or what goes here what goes there I'm a very basic kind of guy is that an abacus it looks like it huh cool yeah so I um, I'm not the best guy to design a room so I my, my imagination might be limited when it comes to designing those so if you, if you look at my house right now it's pretty plain. No picture frames, no designs, just everything is practical. There are no... It's not clean. Well, it's it's kind of clean, cleanish. But it's not like spankingly clean, if you get what I mean. It's uh, clean enough. It's organized enough, it's clean enough, it's uh, decent enough. Yeah, but I don't really like clean it or make it so good looking because for me it's a practical kind of thing I don't need to look amazing I just need it to not block me I need to uh, have fresh air I need to not get sick with the germs so it has to be clean enough but it doesn't have to be pristine yeah, so with designing with uh, putting furnishing it's also my way as long as I have my PC as long as I have all the stuff, all the gadgets, all the paraphernalia in their uh, in the place where I want them, I'm happy. So, with that being said, I don't think I will be able to give a very interesting answer, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, so I have two choices mainly. I would either go for the. Why are people so slow, guys? Well, it's a bit traffic, understandably. I probably should give a bit more space in there. It's, I'm driving to Manila stylish. <laughs> bumper to bumper. Let's uh, slow down here and give some space. Around 5 seconds, was it? Something like that. Okay, now they're pulling out on me. 
so I'll probably either upgrade the kitchen or upgrade the bedroom. Let's go first with the bedroom because the bedroom I have no imagination at all. In the bedroom I would put the bed. <laughs> Maybe a few lamps, side tables so I can put stuff in there. Looks like accident up ahead. Ah, there we go. Someone got caught speeding, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Sports car. Maybe those two were racing or something. Oh, yeah. So... The bedroom is a bit of a bad choice, I would say. Because I don't have a lot of stuff in it. Maybe I would get like a fantastic bed. But how would you describe a fantastic bed? I don't know, I have no clue. Make it a nice bed. Make it a, uh, I don't know, a bed that doesn't make you, doesn't give you back pains. A bed where when you lie down, you don't touch the bed, you're actually floating. A hover bed. <laughs> I don't know, no clue. So, yeah, uh, bed, side table, lights, I don't know, some clothes, uh, how do you say, cabinets, drawers. That's it. Be very basic, very basic. I'm very low maintenance like that. So maybe let's go with the kitchen. With the kitchen, I don't, I'm not an expert either. But uh, I would like to have things there. So I would have no excuse or minimal excuse to go out and buy food. Because right now we always buy food outside. We rarely cook. I think it's been, I don't know, two weeks since I last cooked. Every time we just eat outside or uh, order in have something delivered there's food ban there's food panda there's delivery there's grab food which is like uber eats what you have in the u.s so we have all these delivery services and i have like memberships which allow which give me like free delivery so at the end of the day we're tired from working we don't want to cook anymore you just order something but it's not the healthiest thing especially if you pick some very dangerous stuff if you pick some unhealthy stuff thank goodness no cars here so yeah it's a bit uh, a bit open-ended but yeah so what I was thinking is I would like to and we did try it but that habit didn't actually um, settle in we kind of tried it for a week or two buying stuff cooking every night or cooking every weekend or something like that but it has to be continuous and it's not continuous right now because when things get busy the cooking is the first to go so maybe what I would like is to design a kitchen that is very um, how do you say very uh, homey very I'm looking for a term oh, but the, the, the word escapes me but you get what I mean so I'm looking for, I'm, I want to make it as comfortable, as easy to cook as possible. I would get number one, I would get a dishwasher. Because my hatest thing is not cooking, it's not preparing, it's washing the dishes. I absolutely hate, hate, hate washing dishes. It's become more tolerable recently because I can listen to podcasts while doing so, watch videos, you know, like that. But still I, I would like to not have do it if possible so uh, that's the number one thing I would put in the kitchen next thing would be a hmm you know I don't really know a lot about cooking but I would like to get well coffee has to be there a coffee maker has to be there uh, right now I think I mentioned this before I brew coffee every day that's the, I think, the most cooking I do. So I brew cooking every, I brew cooking, <laughs> I brew coffee every day, and uh, I use a a drip style filter, a drip style uh, coffee maker, a uh, pour over. So it's called the V60. If you're familiar with coffee, if you are like a coffee enthusiast, you might have heard of V60, V60. It's a very famous, uh, one of the like iconic um, coffee makers there. It's not really expensive, it's super cheap, but it's uh, it makes nice coffee. And then I have a hand grinder, so every morning I wake up, 
I use my hand grinder to wake me up and do a bit of exercise because it, it requires a bit of effort. Like for a single cup, I would need to grind beans for, I don't know, five minutes maybe. So while the water is boiling, while the water is heating up, I'm grinding the beans. So uh, definitely I would like to have that in my kitchen. And I'm still thinking if I want it automated or not because uh, I can buy an automated coffee maker where I just basically press a button and then it grinds and it makes the coffee for me. And there are brands which actually give very nice quality even with the automated thing because the normal coffee makers, they're not very good. They're not as good as when you hand make them basically because you can balance the water, where the water goes, the exposure to the beans, the temperature and whatnot. And the basic coffee makers don't have that. But the expensive ones do. So if I have a budget, I may... Oh crap. Oh crap. Guys, I absolutely forgot about this. Why did that happen? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. My hero. And I think we'll end the episode there. If we can make it or not. So coffee maker? Maybe. But I'm not sure if I'm ready to let go of my uh, hand grinder because it helps me with the exercise and with the waking up in the morning. <laughs> so we'll see. But yes, I'll probably buy one. And then kitchen appliances. For cooking. A decent stove. Oven. All the kinds of things you would need to have all the kinds of cooking options. So basically to minimize the need for going out or ordering out. Yeah. If we, and then whenever I would have the urge to have something delivered, and I'm going so slow here because I'm saving up on fuel. So I'm basically drifting, cruising, floating, gliding, however you want to call it. Although it doesn't seem like we will make it if I don't put some gas in it. Put some diesel in it. Yeah, so uh, that's something that maybe we could, I could do. So if it's an expensive kitchen, it's 300,000 for a kitchen. I could make it top of the line. And whenever I get the urge, oh, I just, I don't want to cook. I just want to order. Oh yes, I, I would want like an auto ordering system. Because right now, one of the main roadblocks is number one, the dishwashing. But the next one is probably, I don't have raw materials. I don't have ingredients. So because I didn't go grocery shopping. So if I can make the grocery automated or make it less of a hassle, then yeah, that, that can work. That can be less of an excuse to order. But that's the goal. To uh, cook as much as possible and uh, not uh, and make get my money's worth on that kitchen something like that wow there we go 500 liters down the drain let's have a look at how much uh, did we go through today actually that's quite a lot I guess that's because we're in the highway we are at 1,116. We were at somewhere around 500 a while ago, so we traveled actually 500 kilometers. That's good progress. Yeah, it really helps when you're on the highway. Because in the first episode, we started in the city. Passing through the city, passing through some roads, which were slow. And yeah, highway helps definitely. Tons. So we'll just park here. We'll call it an episode. And we will continue in the next one, okay? And we will do some more Q&As. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have some promos. I have a sale going on till end of March. So yeah, I'm not hard selling you, but I am giving you space to think about it. To try it out. You can try it out for as low as $1. You'll gain access to the exclusive videos currently available in there. Some behind the scenes videos of my bloopers and practice runs for flying, trucking, truck config and whatnot. So check it out and let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day. 
please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like hit the like button comment share with your friends all that stuff thank you for watching have a nice day and catch you in the next episode of clumsy trucking and uh, have a nice day bye bye